Yeah, it's, it's different, you know, playing on Saturday away, long, long bus ride back, you know, got back well after midnight. Um, and uh, so you have to, you know, you play in four days, you, you, you squeeze days together, basically. And um, I think our staff's done a <clears throat> good job of vetting out uh, preparation versus rest uh, and recovery. Um, because the clock's not going to slow down, you know, 734 or whatever it is on Thursday night's going to come. Um, and so we've, uh, we've been pretty diligent in making sure that our guys are rested um, and, and as fresh as possible on Thursday with still getting the preparation in. So, you know, we'll have, uh, we'll have a good practice today. Had a good walkthrough last night. Yeah, haven't haven't made a decision on that. A um, hundred percent, I, I don't know. Um, he would, you know, he he could have continued in the Toledo game. You know, he wasn't carried off the field, um, but he was not, um, you know, able to be as effective, you know, as Brogan would have been. And then, uh, as we had gone through the week, I mean, it it was uh, taking a while, you know, and and still wasn't totally there um, last week. So. Um, we really haven't seen him other than warm-ups, you know, since Saturday. We're not doing much on Friday, so it's been since Thursday. So I think we'll know a lot more today. We really only have today and tomorrow, you know, so we're going to have to make, uh, make that decision quickly. But uh, um, we're hoping that he's, that he's healthy. But, you know, as you know, Brogan's been doing a really good job uh, as well. So um, we know we should have two. How, how healthy, you know, one of those guys is, we'll know a lot more today. Yeah, same thing. Um, you know, he, he practiced some last week and just wasn't able to get to the point where he needed to be on, on Saturday. And again, so we really haven't seen him move around, um, you know, since really last Thursday. And so, um, you know, ankle sprains can be, can be quick and they can be long. I mean, and each guy's different and whether it's high ankle sprain and all that. So, you know, we're, we're hopeful, but again, I'm sorry, we'll know a lot more today. No. And then uh, on the O line, both Andrew Wiley and Jerry Andrew, they both got hurt. How are they doing? Yeah. Um, you know, we're we're hopeful um, with uh, with Wiley. Um, you know, in DT, there's we're hopeful with that, but uh, his is his is a little bit more difficult than than Wiley's. Um, and then uh, then Austin Barnes just came back this week. He hasn't played the past couple of weeks. How, how Who's this? Austin Barnes. Oh yeah. Uh, he's so talented. Uh, he, I mean, he is, he is, uh, he's a big time talent. You know, you guys just get to see the ones that we do in games. And I guess probably some in pregame, but you know, when you come out to practice and just the consistency, you know, he can, uh, he can make that ball go high and far. Um, and uh, you know, our specialists and Coach Keen talks about this. You know, really, our weapons. We have a talented group of specialists. Special teams incorporates everybody, but just our specialists. And um, you know, when those guys are playing at a high level, our football team is is much much better. And then uh, with Western looming at the rivalry game, that game, does the mindset set change at all, or is it kind of the same in uh, preparation? In terms of playing Western, yeah. yeah, no, I think it's a it's a big deal. My first game was last year with them, you know, and it was. Uh, you know, just a, a game that we were excited about playing. And then, you know, they returned the opening kick for a touchdown. And you look up at the end of the first quarter, and it was a lot to a little. I mean, it's just a bad, you know, embarrassing day for us. And um, I mean, they're really playing good football um, and uh, have been doing a great job. But we're, we're, we're super excited about, about playing them. You know, I mean, again, if, if any week not having a bye, you know, essentially all year we don't have a bye. Um, you know, in this game being played, you know, on a, on a Thursday, I, I love it. I mean, I, it can't come soon enough. And again, I, our guys are, are going to want to get in a nice tub and all that before, uh, you know, they may not agree with me because we're, we're trying to heal up at the same time. But, um, you know, we're super excited about this game. And then this is kind of a question for both uh, you and Coach Cadden. How do you prepare for the offense of last year? I mean, you Yeah, I mean, at every, uh, you, you know, you mentioned the skill spots. It, it's the O-line that makes everything go. But, um, you know, those, those are all names that um, are really good football players, you know. And obviously, um, on the ground, 
and in the air. And then the guy pulling the trigger, he um, he's just he's a really good quarterback. You know, I mean, the I think the intangibles just ooze out of him. So it's one thing to look at a guy's arm strength and his accuracy, and you know he's he, he's so efficient with the ball, but. Uh, um, you just know that the guy's a leader and, and that he manages the game um, really, really well. Yeah, I couldn't say anything different to that. You know, the, uh, Terrell has, I mean, he's completing se almost 70% of his passes. He's got 20 touchdowns, you know, just a handful of interceptions. I mean, so he, that, the, you know, those are the numbers that back up the consistency in which he's playing the game. Um, does everything in a very disciplined manner. I mean, he, he carries, carries out every. Uh, fake in the same manner, you know. He's he's uh, very specific with all of his his movement when uh, and running the offense, you know. And then you know when he's when he's clearly making checks or adjusting things or checking the sideline, you know it's it's into the right thing. So you know that he's he's mentally he's you know he's always spot on. So um, and then you know Braverman, uh, a receiver, he's got 75 catches on the season, which is an impressive number. Um, does a great job when he's got the ball in his hands. He can move and run. Um, Davis can get downfield and catch the long ball. He can also catch a tunnel screen and take off for, you know, 60 yards as well. I mean, they're they're both very talented with their feet and and uh, um, and then and then catching the ball. And then of course Franklin is a returning player of the year. So um, he's a physical running back, not just a talented athlete. You know, he's a tough tough runner. So um, definitely have our hands full. It's a welcome challenge. Yeah, you know, I, I do believe that, that every game um, and every week is its own animal, and you can definitely, you know, see trends, you know, like you said. But, uh, you know, I think the last two weeks, you know, um, were different and then similar. You know, when you talk about going into halftime and then Toledo, um, you know, we were out playing them and winning at the end of the first quarter. Um, we were playing good football. We got stops and, and moving the ball and scoring. And, again, we talked about we'd rather have had – touchdowns. It was the end. You know, we turned the ball over, had a block kick. Things unraveled a bit in the end of um, the half. You know, it just all of a sudden, unnecessarily, um, you know, they had more points on the board. You know, instead of being 21 to, um, well, we had six to, to 13, you know, they, they have a couple extra touchdowns. Um, whereas this week, um, you know, it's, it was an explosive offense. That's all anybody talked about, right? It's 15 drives or five plays or left or whatnot or less. And defensively, um, you know, and they're a good offense. They're going to take what, what you give them. But it was a 17-play opening drive. They converted on four third downs and a, and a fourth down. And so, you know, we didn't get the stops. Um, but it wasn't, you know, an explosive play on the third play of the game that, you know, where they're running by everybody. Um, and... Uh, we moved the ball offensively, but just couldn't sustain the drives and couldn't be, you know, didn't finish consistently. And so, and so we got down. Um, I would say at the end of the first half, uh, it got away from us there a little bit too, you know, where we were making them uh, uh, work for it and, and sustaining uh, at least some first downs each drive. It got away from us at the end. Um, and so in some ways it's the same score result you know they've got more points than we do at the at the end of the half but um, I think each animal is its own um, I know our guys we talked about all, going all the way back to Old Dominion about starting fast and diving in not just putting your feet in the water and testing things out um, you know that was such an emphasis in the first game of the year and I don't know that we that we've emphasized it you know as a program as much but uh offensively we always want to get off to a great start of course defensively you always want to get off to a great start um so i think that's something that we're you know paying attention to how do you reverse the the trend um i've got a magic wand somewhere uh you know in my desk and i haven't found it yet but we'll uh um we'll just keep working at it Um, you know, wasn't here for his for his first year, but was here for last year, and and uh, you know, obviously got a lot of attention, deserved attention, you know, for for what they were able to accomplish in that second year. Um, you know, I don't know that 
the 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 programs learn or in similar situations. You know, I think that uh, I've spent some time um, speaking with and to some degree studying some programs that I, I feel as though were in uh, in more of a similar situation. Um, than Eastern than maybe Western is right now. And so obviously we're in the state, recruit against those guys, play against those guys, very aware of, of uh, what they're doing, the great job that they're doing. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't know uh, if we're taking, taking anything, you know, specific that they're doing and, and trying to incorporate it here. Are you talking about thirty yard line of our own, or no, own. yeah, yeah. You know the th thing is, is they they did a good job of. Well, first of all, they're a good defense, you know, and and they were a good defense a year ago. We uh, the difference between this year and last year is that we had explosive plays in the run game. We had zero explosive run plays on Saturday, and uh, they had to all come through the air. We had five is all, and that's a, a low number, um, and so. You know, when they're forcing you to make you earn it, you know, they're tackling you well, uh, we're not breaking tackles. You know, you can look at it different ways. You can look at that we need to sustain our blocks longer, you know, and, and break some of those. When you have to earn it every single play, at some point a good defense is either going to make a play, uh, and then sometimes you might make a small mistake too that sets you back, puts you behind the chains, and now you got to overcome it on, you know, a second or third and long. And that's what we weren't able to overcome especially in the first half. And so um, you got to tip your hat off to them and the things that they did. Um, they kept you know, us in front of them, and that was a big key. Last, last year, Reggie ran wild and had five explosive runs um, of our six. And so the style of defense they played was much the same. It's just that you know, we had a playmaker out there running around and causing havoc on them and gained almost 100 yards rushing. What do you look for there? Well, um, I just think that they're they're pretty aggressive in their style. You know, they're going to play some, you know, a lot of man to man. I think, you know, 40 snaps of man to man uh, of some version this last week uh, against Miami. Um, and so, you know, on the outside, they trust their 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 guys in coverage, um, which allows them to uh, commit more guys to you know stopping the run in the box. And you know, I would guess that that's what they would try to do to us, since that's what we like to establish is a run game and get. D Jack and Shaq uh, going, um, so you know I would say that it's going to fall right in line with what uh, what they want to do is what they've always done. So they're just uh, you know solid across the board, a lot like what we saw this last weekend, you know. And they're they're giving up a couple explosives uh, each game, you know, through the pass because of their man to man coverage, and you know that's something we want to try to exploit uh, with our wide receivers. Coach Yeah, it's that magic wand thing again, too, a little bit. I mean, it comes down to, you know, it comes down to, um, you know, you having a, having a game plan that potentially attacks the things that they like to do on third down um, and having some, some calls that you prefer in that situation um, that uh, you believe match up well against either their personnel, uh, their protection, uh, their route concepts, um, you know, and then, and then you've got to be able to execute those things. Um, you know, there's a couple situations where we're, you know, we, we have uh, a person in a position to make a play to get us off the field that, uh, um, you know, that if we're off the field in that situation, you know, the points that come after that don't occur, right? So um, we have, uh, we had a couple of those situations as well. So it's a combination of the, of the right game plan in that situation, first of all, getting to third down is a big deal, you know, and so forcing, I think, 23 third downs, um, uh, sounds strange maybe to some, but putting them in third down that many times is the right thing. You're not, that means you're not giving up big plays on first and second down. You know, you're putting them in those third down situations, but now you got to take the next step, graduate to um, getting them there and then capitalizing on that opportunity, which, you know, um, in, the, in the second half, we, we, got, we got better at that. You know, we had a couple, couple three and outs and some additional, you know, we had uh, five total stops in the, third, in the second half, which was a step in the right direction. So we need that momentum to carry on into this week uh, with the guys doing it. With Western being such a strong offense, would, do we possibly see uh, more guys in the box attacking on the field, like maybe five, six guys? 
you, you can, but with, uh, with the, you know, they're, they're a spread team. So they're going to have uh, three receivers and four receivers in the game. And two of those receivers are possibly some of the most dangerous people, you know, in the conference. You know, so you've got to, you got to balance those two things, you know. Um, one of the things that our, our, you know, we, you know, by the, by the nature of our defense, it matches up. You know, so if they put people in the box, it, our defense naturally matches up to what they put in the box. And uh, you know, if they send four vertical, we have four vertical. They only send two vertical, we only have two vertical. It's a, it's a matchup defense in its base, you know, uh, to what people do. And uh, um, and I think that that's that's uh, that's a concept that's that's you know fairly widespread in the day and age of of spread spread offense. You know, where people are trying to spread you out. You know, so at that point, it becomes you and me in space and who's going to win, you know, and uh, uh, that's a lot of what the game is today. So you, you go back to the game on Saturday, you had three sacks and uh, was the most pressure you've had really since LSU. What do you think really maybe attributed to that uh, extra push up front? In two of those situations, it was, you know, it was Luke McLean and Clay Dawson each just making a play, you know, beating the man across from it wasn't anything, um, you know, fantastic in terms of a call. Um, you know, Luke was lined up at the defensive end. A lot of times he's lined up at our tackle position. He got himself on the edge and got there. Um, Clay is just continues to keep coming around. I mean, he is, he's got pass rush ability and he can get off the ball quickly, turn the corner and that's, uh, you know, so, but anytime a defensive lineman makes a, uh, a play in a sack in a three or four man rush, then you've got to attribute that to sound coverage on the back end. So we're doing our job at the, on the back end for that quarterback to hold the ball for the extra count. The third sack was, uh, was somewhat of a pressure because uh, it was Nate Adams who, who triggered on the quarterback and you know, got him by a shoestring. But the thing is, he held on that shoestring and didn't let go. And that, uh, you know, that got him on the ground. You, got, you guys on defense have been, had to been transformers all year. You've got 12 guys and you have game action. But yeah, Nathan Adams come in. And then you also have Ross Williams uh, at, at, in the secondary. Talk about how you thought both of those guys played. Yeah, I think Ross did a good job. You know, he, uh, um, you know, he he came in with confidence. He wasn't that freshman with the bright eyes. Um, he executed the things that we asked him to execute. You know, there was a penalty thrown on him for defensive holding, and uh, um, you know, I mean, those are those things are always going to be debated. You know, from a defensive coach on defensive holding, and then you're looking on the film, it was, you know, you're going to tell the kid to do it exactly the same way again. He played with confidence, is what he did. You know, um, you know, Nate moves to a different position. Um, Amos Houston comes into a different spot and plays for us a little bit. Tyler Onda um, got in and played as well uh, in a different position just to kind of help with some of that depth. And, uh, and you know, those guys are all growing up in, in what we're doing. And, and they're also doing a good job of adjusting to things that we put on them. You know, when, when you know, uh, Nate has played so, so much um, at what we call our buck linebacker position, and all of a sudden now he just sees everything from a different perspective and coverage is different. You know, you're asking a lot of, of a guy who, who tries to play the game as fast as he possibly can, you know, and, uh, and so, you know, he's growing. He's getting better. Coach Creighton, uh, it, it's kind of become the, what the Max calls for, midweek football and action and everything that's caught on. And Eastern, for the longest time, has kind of been left out of the midweek party, and this week your team's invited to it. How gratifying or much more emphasis does it put on your program to – have a national spotlight game like this? Yeah, I know that <clears throat> Heather and the administration has worked, you know, really hard, you know, on, on their end to um, to getting us the the opportunity, and absolutely thankful for that. You know, just outside of that, just having a short week and playing um, an in-state rival, you know, we're we're excited about all of that. And then you throw on top, it's home game, midweek game, um, national television, um, all, all of those things are exciting and. Um, you know, we're, we're really internal right now, you know, with, uh, you know, trying to get better um, every week and uh, growing up some, some depth, you know, and, and a lot of guys playing, um, you know, for the first time. Uh, so that is our focus, but we're also at the same time aware uh, of the opportunity, you know, that we have. And, um, you know, when we got to play on a national stage at LSU, um, you know, our guys rose to the occasion. Um, so we're excited about this one. had to be pretty cool for him to look up and see his high school travel 300 plus miles to come watch him play. And, and it's nice for a kid who, who's there to come play at home and then have some success. Yeah, 
he's um, just so so proud of of Darius Jackson. I mean, he is um, he is playing how how you want and hope that a senior would, you know, and been so consistent. Um, just such a good player uh, throughout the entire season. Doesn't bring attention to himself. Practices incredibly hard. Um, has a, a quiet, you know, presence about him, but uh, utterly confident and um, serves the team. I mean, he is on a bunch of special teams. Wants to be on the special teams, um, and so just so proud of him. And then, you know, when you get a guy like that, it, you can't just be a great player to have people drive 300 miles to come and see a play you know obviously he's made an impact in that community and he's known for more than just being a good football player um so yeah I mean I saw all those jerseys you know and um you know it was a surprise to him and they honored him and um just a, a an awesome awesome evening in that way coach DeBoer my final question is, is for you uh, you look back and it's, it's hard to believe that we're driving back Offensively, have been able to do. You're now five straight games with, with 20 points or more. It's the first streak since 2004 of the Eastern 10. What do you? Where do you think the sky is the limit for, for this offense when they really get clicking? Well, I think it's what we're doing this year right now is we're consistent. You know, um, we haven't had a big game. We've had. I mean, you know, we're averaging. I don't know, 400 yards or something, but we haven't had a game, I think, over 505 yards or something like that. And so, you know, the LSU was the bottom end, I think, with 255. And so consistently, we've been able to move the ball. I think where we need to continue to grow is just in our explosiveness. And that's when you see the great offenses really evolve. And, um, you know, I think uh, it, it's our guys just continue to each day try to get better. I mean, because teams see what we're doing and they're going to try to attack it and our guys just keep getting better at doing what they do and um, um, I'm just proud I'm proud of the, the way that our guys go about their business each day each week in practice and I think that's really where it where it starts and then you know um, that that's the goal though is just improve every single week just like coach Creighton talked just like coach Max been talking and so um, you know when you go you don't go in thinking well I mean I didn't you know last week you kind of find out Okay, there are some benchmarks and kind of some cool things with with DJ and you know point scored or whatever it may be. But right now we're just trying to to win football games by moving the ball the best we can and uh, and putting up points. And there's you know we saw you know you guys even talked about there's some weaknesses still. I mean we aren't getting on the board as early as we need to to play with a lead to let our defense pin their ears back and get after you know the opponent and. Um, you know, kind of stress the other the other side of the ball out a little bit by, you know, having some explosive plays and putting them on their heels. And so, you know, those are the things we're trying to accomplish. And, and what a better no better time than this week uh, against Western. Anything else? Thank you. Thanks, guys. You bet. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.